Hello everyone, Travis here, and I've got another tutorial video for y'all. Today we're going to be going over water and terrain. First up, I'm going to show you how to do a fountain. This is just one of many ways to do it, but a lot of people who play this game do it this way. I like to use the water features just to add some dimension to it, especially the waterfall and this particular jet. It always looks better if you use the ice vertical cliff face, and you can do that by hovering your cursor over and clicking the center square. I also like to use the steel railings, and what I do is I put them on the inside square. So basically I put them over the water, so you're gonna do that by holding the shift key and putting it on the edge of the water square. That way I can put other fences on the outside, again so that it adds layers to it. You can finish it off by continuing the railings around the outer path and then using the terrain paint to paint inside the fountain and underneath the path that surrounds it. Next I always like to add trees around it. I usually start with smaller trees on the inside closer to the path and then work my way out to larger ones on the exterior. It'll end up looking something like that. Next, let's talk a little bit about water. There's a lot of different things you can do with water, but what we're gonna do today is just create a small pond slash river and um, just give you an idea of what you can do with the water and the terrain paint and all of that. In this case, we're bringing the water flush with the terrain, but that's not the only way to do it. Sometimes it looks better if you have the water a half step lower, like I did right here, to create more of a distinction between the water level and the land level and give you kind of a definitive shoreline. As you can see, I went ahead and connected the small pond to the little indention we had over by the hilly area and made kind of a river. And something that you want to do, especially if your water is flush with the terrain, is use the terrain paint to create a shore. I usually like to use the sand to create a beach. And then something else you can do, again like I did on the beach for this scenario, is use another one of the terrain paints to create more texture. And then of course you want to add trees. One thing I want to emphasize about trees, and it's actually something that I had to work on recently, is making sure that you use a variety of trees and put them in in layers so it looks a lot more realistic and just in general makes it look better. To further add to the layering, use shrubs as well. And what's good about the shrubs is most of them will actually place on the water. So it looks like vegetation is actually growing out of the water. Now we're gonna go ahead and move into terrain, and we're actually gonna build a mine train roller coaster. Those in real life tend to hug the terrain and that kind of thing. There are a couple of different ways to go underground in this game. The first one is just to go against a vertical face and it'll automatically create a tunnel. The second way is basically the same thing, but the difference is you're going to expose a vertical face on a single tile and create a tunnel yourself. Terrain in general is a little bit hard to explain, and I'm definitely in no way an expert at terraforming, so pretty much the best way to do it is to just demonstrate. I'm going to do my absolute best Best at trying to explain this, but if there's something you don't understand or if you have any related questions, please feel free to comment below and if it's something I'm able to explain, I'll definitely answer. A couple of things about building underground, it's a little bit harder to see what you're doing and that comes with its own set of challenges, but another thing is objects that are on the surface are almost always in the way, so I usually make the scenery objects invisible and you can do that in the options drop down at the top of the screen. In there you're able to make the scenery invisible, the rides invisible, the people invisible, and there are a few other options. If you have open roller coaster tycoon 2 you can actually make the paths invisible too which is super useful and I'm not sure why it wasn't in the original game. Let me just go ahead and fix the track layout real quick. Okay looks pretty good. The first thing I want to go over for terrain is when you want it to look rocky and uneven the best way to achieve that effect is by pulling up the individual tiles and putting them at different heights and angles than the ones next to it and then also using the terrain paint to give it more color and definition as you can see here. If you look, I've actually gone ahead and selected the see-through rides option so that I'm able to access the terrain between what we've already worked on and the roller coaster track itself. Next I'm going to add some scenery to this vertical face over here. Basically, something that makes the entry into the underground part of the ride a little bit more exciting and of course makes it look nicer is adding scenery to the cliff face. 
So I'm just gonna put a little building up here and of course some trees and just spruce it up. And again, this is up to your own creativity and imagination and you definitely would want it to fit whatever theme you're going for as well. As I mentioned in my previous tutorial video, you always want to include the path as part of the ride experience also. And for this particular roller coaster, we have a lot of space in the middle, so I'm going to kind of wind the queue through that space. And I purposely made the path go up above where that vertical face is, because I feel like there's a lot of ways we can do the scenery to tie the vertical face in with the path. And I think it's looking pretty good so far. And also, I hope you guys are finding this helpful. I do apologize if I'm going too fast. I tend to be a little bit quick in this game. But definitely feel free to bounce around or slow things down if you need to. Ultimately, the goal of this series is to try to help you all improve your own Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 skills. A lot of advanced builders don't really use the in-game themed station options. Ultimately, they just build around them. As for me, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I think in some cases, it's actually helpful to use the theme station as kind of a base to build off of, which is what we're going to do here. Right now I'm just going to go ahead and continue to build and tweak and all that. You may recognize this park as sort of a blast from the past. This park is called The Falls and Chargels and I use this for our first collaboration series. The reason I decided to use this particular park is because in the first tutorial episode I was using a park that had a lot of custom scenery in it and I was having a really hard time building structures that would compare to the scenery that comes in the game and this particular park park has a lot of theming options. Alright, moving right along. So far I'm pretty satisfied with the way that it's turning out. Another thing I like to do with the terrain sometimes is at a point in the lift hill, usually at the top, I will pull up a single square and paint and color it to match whatever theme I'm working on and then have the track go through that one square. I think it looks pretty cool and it definitely improves the excitement rating. And then for the sake of realism and to add another layer, you want to put a fence around any part of the ride that could potentially be accessible to the guests. Of course in this game they won't actually go over there unless there's a path leading to it, but in real life there would definitely be a safety fence. And then again, don't forget to include the path as part of the theming. Next I'm going to do something with the part that comes out of the ground at the end, leading back to the station. I'm going to paint the terrain under the grass so that it looks like it's worn and not perfectly clean grass. And also I'm going to put some hedges around it. You'll notice that I really struggle getting the hedge into place right here, and that's because I wanted it to go down into the underground part. Sometimes the shift and control trick will work, but in this case since I wanted it to be on a diagonal, I actually had to lower the grid square next to it, which is definitely something you have to do sometimes. And now just continuing on, adding some details, making everything fit together and look as cohesive as possible. You also want to make sure that you put the no entry sign where the exit path meets the main path. The people in this game are kind of stupid, so the fewer areas they have access to, the less likely they are to get lost. Alright, that works better. To reiterate what I said about making the path part of the experience, I'm going to actually continue the rocky terrain over here so that the path over here on the side will actually go through it. And then after we're done with all the paths and objects, the most important part and the thing that improves the ratings the most, we're going to add some trees. And again we're going to put a variety of trees and shrubs. I like to use trees that are different sizes and definitely different colors and just fill in the entire area. And alright, at this point I'm just touching things up and doing some last minute details, and there we go. This is our completed product. Thank you all for watching, I hope you found this helpful, and now, let's ride.